Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Wednesday, February 8th, 2018, episode 24. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yeah, maybe a little lulls. Today's show is titled, Stealth Bill Targets Your Overseas Info Shelter. And you can get show notes at hisisheadlines.com or check out the links to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video or go to istate.tv slash h024. On this show... Stealth Info Tech Bill, Having Sex with Prisoners, Turk Reich's Aegean Bluster, Bot Wars of Bitfinex, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your headlines you may have missed. Senate bill gives U.S. enforcers power to access overseas digital information. There is a little-known bill circulating through the Senate that would grant U.S. law enforcement officers the power to go after digital information stored overseas. So while Americans bicker over Trump's calls for a military parade, this bill quietly advances a bill that is absolutely designed to target the efforts by people to escape the watchful eye of the coercive enterprise and this story is from homelandprepnews.com and i'll touch briefly on it and i'll say a little bit more about this so a framework would be established for law enforcers to legally access email communications stored on overseas cloud-based servers and u.s officials would be authorized to negotiate bilateral bilateral data sharing agreements with foreign countries under a senate bill announced on monday now did you hear anything about this nope nope everybody's talking about the military parade which is just fine that's what everybody would love you to talk about instead of this the clarifying lawful overseas use of data or Cloud Act. Boy, they really had to work hard to get that, didn't they? The Cloud Act. That's not Orwellian at all. Would also establish a process for providers of email and cloud computing services to challenge warrants for data stored overseas. Additionally, providers would be able to disclose to a foreign government when a warrant has been issued for information stored in that country. And this is introduced by Republican U.S. Senator Orrin Hatch. And there's more to it. And again, you can go to iState.tv slash H024 to get more information. But I just want to say this is about far more than what this article suggests and what the bill itself is 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 hinting at. They mean to use this is my speculation. I'm not saying I have an inside source, but they mean to use this bill to specifically target the so-called dark web, the cryptocurrency folks, the people that are going to attempt to use proxy servers from outside the US. They mean to to set a precedent that will allow them to go after what is essentially, instead of a tax shelter, and I guess some of them kind of become tax shelters de facto, don't they? If you're if you're moving value that the government can't get its hooks into, that's that's kind of a tax shelter the way that they see it. Uh, they they mean to invade your in your overseas offshore information shelter hence hence the headline and the the top story headline for the show new york cop faces no charge new york cops face no charges after teen accuses them of rape 
So it seems that uh, New York City police have found a way to get out of being charged with rape, and it's thanks to the absence of a law that a majority of states don't have. Apparently, 36 states, including New York State, in the U.S., have no laws prohibiting police from having sexual relations with people in their custody. Now, I'll let you think about that for a moment. So, so think about it in this, in these, on these terms. If you take someone into custody, you can have sex with them. And there's absolutely, there's no reason whatsoever to believe that uh, even if you participated in the act consensually, that it was actually consensually given the or that it was actually consensual given the imbalance of power between you and your de facto kidnapper this is one of the reasons why even if you're a high school teacher and you had sex with a high school kid who happened to be of the age of consent you're still going to be in trouble because there's there's an imbalance of power there that's that that you got to look at. Apparently, a teenage girl sadly learned this the hard way. She claims that two officers raped her while holding her in custody. And the cops came back and they said, you know, because they knew they were done because there was going to be DNA. There was, there, yeah, there was going to be proof that they actually did have sex with her. So you end up with uh, the cops saying, dude, it was consensual. So what do you have? You have the classic cops said versus non-shiny badge people said scenario. And I, I think we know how that worked out. So the girl thought that uh, even if even if they claimed that it was consensual, that they would still have legal issues. But nope, nope, that's not the case. Turk Reich claims Eastern Aegean Shelf is theirs. The military of the Turk Reich is on display again as the Turks have declared that they intend on fighting the Greeks and the Cypriots over waters that lay atop rich reserves of natural gas and oil. And, and that's just a wonderful, lovely thing that's going on with the Turks. And I hope more and more people use the phrase Turk Reich when they talk about them. The imperialistic regime is not shy about deploying bellicose rhetoric towards its neighbors in Eastern Europe, even as it continues its unwarranted assault on the people of Afrin in, in what I, I would say is just simply a land grab. And this is from ah, ah, Ahval News. It's spelled A-H-V-A-L-N-E-W-S dot com. Turkey is ready to take all necessary measures to protect the rights of the rights of Turkish Cypriots and Turkey's ownership of the continental shelf in the eastern Aegean. Turkish Foreign Minister Melvit Kavuskolo tells uh, uh, Katimerini in an interview. Uh, so that guy, I'm not going to try to say his name again, claimed that an area where Turkey is exploring for hydrocarbons blocks six of Cyprus's exclusive economic zone belongs to Turkey's continental shelf. He also reiterated that there was no sea border between Greece and Cyprus. Keep watching Turkey, because I'm telling you, these guys, they're, they're, they're literally on a war path. Let me get to our next headline here, which is, The bot wars on Twitter claim a temporary casualty. Bitfinexed. That's at Bitfinexed. So, one anti Bitfinex Twitter user is accusing a swarm of pro Bitfinex bots of getting his Twitter account shut down in an attempt to silence dissent against Bitfinex. The story itself reveals the ever emerging battle of the bots that is occurring across multiple competing spheres and multiple social media. <laughs> Oh, wow. Social media platforms. I need one of those. I, I If you use the Fiend phone, they have a little thing that you can press. It's a cough thing. When you think you're going to cough, you can press it and it mutes you. I don't have that time, uh, type of high tech available here. So if I cough, you're going to hear the cough. 
So this is where this 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 uh, bot war thing. This is where one or more side of a conflict deploys bots, be they machine or paid human trolls, to flag social media accounts in an effort to get their enemies knocked off of social media. Now, since most of big social, that's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc., deploy some form of automated triggers to shut down offending accounts, the bot armies can easily strike enemy accounts and get them taken down, and unless you are highly visible, getting your account back up could take weeks, even months, and many who are struck down uh, simply give up. And this is from Mashable. Why release an audit of your so-called stablecoin when you can just shut down your loudest critic's Twitter account? The cryptocurrency world has been in an uproar with allegations that stablecoin Tether and exchange Bitfinex have artificially propped up the value of Bitcoin and are running an elaborate scam. One prominent voice making that claim could, until sometime early February 7th, <coughs> be found on Twitter at at Bitfinexed. That changed for several hours today, hours today when the account was briefly suspended by Twitter. The person behind Bitfinex says the exchange Bitfinex is to blame. And this is a quote from him. After failing to spam my Twitter with 400,000 fake followers, Bitfinex hires bots to mass report my tweets and accounts. My Twitter account is currently suspended. Earlier I had about 20 tweets that were considered private despite the fact that it's all public information and some stuff that even the New York Times has along with Bloomberg. Yes, yeah, so private. So they've been using bots to mass report my tweets. And for me, the story, I don't know who's 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 true, who's not true, but uh, to me, the real story is, is, is this emerging bot war that happens not just here but across multiple spheres. Federal judge stops Orange County from arresting homeless people. That's a, that's a sarcastic clap, by the way. I think you're figuring that out. From our longer leash files comes news that a federal judge has determined that Orange County sheriffs cannot just go ahead and arrest homeless people who have formed camps along the Santa Ana River. And I want to thank you for your service, Judge Carter. We always appreciate when our masters extend our leashes and allow us to avoid being arrested for simply trying to exist. And this is from the LA Times. A federal judge on Tuesday, this past Tuesday, granted a temporary restraining order barring Orange County Sheriff's deputies from arresting homeless people who refuse to leave encampments along the Santa Ana River. And you can go to istate.tv slash h O two four for more information. Your wearable tech could be powered by 3D printed bacteria. So 3D printed bacteria could one day be the source that powers your clothes, the smartwatch on your wrist, your VR goggles. MIT is working on a 3D printer that uses bioink to create bacteria that will be the fundamental building blocks of electricity free wearable tech. And this is from 3D Printing Industry. In the latest research from MIT, a team has developed living 3D printer bioink that's not only smart, but could change the way we think about technology altogether. Harnessing natural reactions to, of bacteria, responsive devices made using this smart ink represent the basic building blocks of electricity-free wearable tech. Made by members of the same team that made the soft robotic fish catching glove, this 3D printable bio ink adds to an extensive portfolio of smart materials in development at MIT. And again, you can go to the show notes for more information. New York gun grabbing assault continues with nine new anti liberty bills. And yes, this story makes my eyes. Bulge out of my head. I don't know if you've paid attention, if you regularly pay attention to what I write and what I say, whether it's this show or is daily, you'll get a general sense that 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 a group of people on the top of my holy crap, what the hell are you thinking list are the gun grabbers. 
and this is a gun grabber story. New York gun grabbers with the authority to make that really hurt are at it again with nine new anti-gun, anti-liberty, anti-progress, anti-human bills intended to whittle away at the fundamental human will to be able to protect yourself from threats, be they foreign, domestic, or mindless drones doing the bidding of these very nitwitted politicrolls who dare fancy they have a right to dictate to nearly 20 million people how to live their lives. So gun grabbers like these should be shunned from all polite civil company. So know these names like Andrea Stewart Cousins, Liz Kruger, Roxanne Persu Persuad, Michael Gianaris, to name a few. And if you happen to be in their social orbit there, New Yorkers, shun them. Demean them publicly. Let them know. Let the other people know around them what truly vulgar, truly anti-human, truly authoritarian, fascio socio status they really are. There should be no place where vogel, vulgar, little wannabe dictators like these should be treated like anything other than the psychopaths that they are. Consider them extremely dangerous. So some of the bills include uh, mandating guns not in use be locked up or otherwise secured. So, you know, having guns for home defense, pfft, screw that, man. Let you you, you got to have them locked up and secured so that uh, I mean, I understand Five minutes. if you're not if you're not sleeping and you have a gun by your bed, whatever the case might be, maybe maybe you should lock your guns up in general, but n not when you not when you might need to grab them right away. Uh, the, there's another bill here would create a taxpayer funded firearm violence research institute. So that actually use money that they stole from you to create an institute designed to, to, to build more fear into people of having basic self-defense tools. And there's, there's a lot more here and it's, it's all hideous. Schiff falls for fake Trump picks with Russian models. This, ladies and gentlemen, is your moment of lulls. So the man who said that Russians are responsible for pushing the Second Amendment so that we can kill each other is now at it again. Adam Schiff, the representative from California, Stan, took the bait of some trolly trolls who posted fake pictures of Donald Trump with Russian models. Schiff jumped at the pics and informed the pranksters that he would be letting the FBI know about this. Now, folks, this is the intellectual discerning capacity of the people who presume to have the right to create laws and regulations that dictate to 300-plus million people how to live their lives. Because idiots like Schiff know better than the 300 million plus people how to live their lives. Former Google guru wants addiction tech stopped. So a former Google employee is leading an alarmist assault on Big Social, accusing Big Social of deploying marketing tactics and building attractive bells and whistles that create addiction tech. So they, they've created an institute and the Institute is called the Center for Humane Technology. And here is a quote from the Center for Humane Technology's website. Governments can pressure technology companies towards humane business models by including the negative externalities of attention extraction on their balance sheets and creating better protections for consumers. We are advising governments on smart policies and better user protections. No, this might be totally heartfelt on your part, but no, all you're really doing, all you're really doing is help spread fear of social media so that people will beg uh, the central authority to take control of their means of communication rather than totally solely working on educating people on how to avoid the addiction and how to use social media in more constructive ways, you're going to open the door for Big Gov to come in and put Big Social Two in its place. Yeah, that's going to work out great because the most offensive, or well, I, I'd say the biggest offender of using 
inappropriate marketing tactics and building attractive bells and whistles intended to create drones, slaves, addiction whores for the state is the coercive enterprise. So they're, they're far more of a threat than big social is. And, and you'd rather seed the ground to big, so big, big, big gov to protect you from big social. Last headline. Madrid rejects talks with Catalonia. Madrid has rejected any efforts to enter into talks with Catalonia about their ongoing demand for greater sovereignty. The Congress on Tuesday, February 6, 2018, voted down a proposal by a Catalan party to begin talks between Madrid and Barcelona. One and now, minute. let's look at the headlines that we didn't get to. So we have... Netanyahu could face corruption charges. Super Bowl serves as backdrop for 5G network test from Verizon. Merkel forms new coalition government. Boo. I like that they couldn't form a government. Sad that they can now. New theory suggests the Milky Way is a galaxy eater. It's a pig. Organic semiconductors? Self-assembling liquid crystals could be the answer. Surviving a breakdown of the water supply. Flat earthers deny Falcon Heavy launch. Call it fake news. Somaliland issues fatwa banning female genital mutilation. Ten Korean seconds. Supreme Court to judge whether crypto regulations are unconstitutional. China requests consultation and compensation over U.S. solar tariffs. And there you have it, folks. If you hear the beep, 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 you know what that means. That means that's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you would like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for February 8th, 2018, or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video, or go to istate.tv slash H024. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gornon of istate.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow istaters.